uh, so that we know that for sure that God is real. Because there are many Christians who just believe, but they don't know whether God is real or not. And when they're in trouble, sometimes they say, I don't know. Um, okay, sometimes, you know, even Christians, when they are in difficulties, sometimes they think, well, God might not be helping me. I don't know if God is real. Is God, is, is God really helping me? So many Christians might have that doubt when they come across difficulties. So it's important for us for evangelism and for, uh, for our own assurance, for f faith in God, uh, that we have strong faith in God when we know that God is real, that He really uh, lives among us and He is helping us and blessing us and heaven and hell are also real. So this topic is, is very important that we know for sure, okay, we know for sure that uh, God is real, the Bible is God's word, and then, then we can trust everything the Bible says is true, okay. So today the, uh, the content is uh, you need you know, to take notes or you can watch the video later because uh, there is a, a, a number of uh, important content that you need to understand, okay, that you need to, um, to be able to tell people. So you might have to write down what you hear or you can watch it again. You can watch it again. Okay, now first here, A, the accurate prophecies in the Bible proves that the Bible is God's Word. So this is the first and most important proof that the accurate prof prophecies in the Bible, the prophecies in the Bible are accurate and also detailed uh, in many details that it has what uh, tell us what is going to happen in the future. So when these prophecies are fulfilled, we know that the Bible is God's Word. Okay, Psalm 22, 14, uh, this is prophecy about Jesus' crucifixion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it has melted within me. My strength is dry up like a pot shirt, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. Okay, so this is a clear prophecy about Jesus' crucifixion. It was written by David 1,000 1, years before uh, Jesus' time. Now this never happened to David. It happened, never happened to David. David was never killed by anyone. But he described what happened to him as if he were Christ. Because he experienced in his uh, relationship with God, he experienced Jesus experience on the cross and then he said I was I'm poured out like water so my blood is drained out from me that the my blood came out from me like uh, water and all my bones are of joint now this is descriptive a uh, figurative language because the Psalms the, because the Psalms are uh, has a lot of figurative language so because he was hanging there so he feels that the joints that are out of joint, that the, uh, the, uh, the bones are out of joint because it's so much pain is pulling on the body. And my heart is like wax, that the heart has no strength. It's like wax, it's melting. It has melted within me. My strength is dry up like a pot shirt. Pot, sh pot shirt, it's a broken pieces of uh, porcelain. So my strength is dry up. I have no 
water inside me, so I'm dried up, I have no strength. And my tongue clings, clings to my jaws because my tongues are dry, my whole body is dry, so it's very hard for me to move my tongues, to move my tongue. It's, it's like when we are, uh, have not drink water for a long, long time and we are under the hot sun, then our tongue also will be dried and hard to move. You have brought me to the dust of death. Now, so Jesus was brought to the dust of death. He was about, he was about to die when he was on the cross. And then he, was, he finally died after he hung on the cross for a num uh, uh, period of time. And, but this never happened to David, that he was never, he has never uh, brought to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked have enclosed me. So the wicked people have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Now here is a description of the crucifixion. Because now crucifixion did not come until uh, a long time from then. Okay, a few hundred years later. And then crucifixion came. Crucifixion did not come until a few hundred years later. So how did David know that one day people would be crucified by piercing the hands and the feet? So how did they know that? That uh, the hands will be, how did David know that his hands and feet will be pierced? That was from the revelation of God that he knew that his hands and feet will be pierced and it never happened to David and then he said that they pierce my hands and my feet and this is how Jesus will uh, okay now you go to Global Fire Missions Ministries I've sent the link already you just search for Global Fire Missions Ministries, and then you can see me. It's always there. Every time, it's in Global Fire Missions Ministries. Okay, and then, um, so that was before cruc uh, crucifixion was invented, and then already, you know, actually, uh, crucifixion was invented more than four hundred years later. So it's more than four hundred years later that crucifixion was invented. So how did David know that? that one day Jesus will be crucified because this is from the revelation of God that his hands and feet will be pierced, that Jesus' hands and feet will be pierced and this was fulfilled, I mean there start to be crucifixion more than 400 years from, uh, from David's time. And I can count my bones. Now this is another figurative language because all the bones are aching. Now if uh, you know, nothing happens to your back, then you won't feel your back right now. But if you are having a backache, then you will feel the backache when I'm talking, that you will feel the pain. And then if you have a backache, and then a headache, and a neck ache, then you'll feel the pain in all these places. So, when Jesus was crucified, that all his bones are uh, in pain, so he can feel his bones, so he can count his bones, where he was aching. They look and stare at me. They, so they were, the people were surrounding me and looking at me and they divide my garments among them <clears throat> and for my clothing <clears throat> they cast lots. <clears throat> <clears throat> so they divide Jesus' garments and then for the inner clothing they could not divide. They cast lots for that. Now this is a little detail and this is what really happened when the Roman soldiers cast lots for Jesus' inner clothing. So this we see that is from God. Okay, now can the other groups see me? Okay, now I'll continue. If you have real problem 
um, see me let me know with my whatsapp okay so they um, so the Roman soldiers did divide the garments of Jesus and cast lots for his inner clothing and a David was never put to death he prophesied crucifixion so he prophesied that Jesus will be crucified because Jesus was the, uh, the the son of David for the descendant of David and then crucifixion was invented more than 400 years after 1000 BC David uh, wrote this about 1000 BC and this uh, crucifixion was invented more than 400 years later so at David's time there was no such thing as crucifixion see the passage prophesied bleeding to death that he would bleed to death that his joints will be in pain his heart will be weak, uh, weakening his heart will be weakening and his body will dry up and then his hands and feet will be pierced and the garments divided and then by casting lots so this is a very accurate prophecy and detailed prophecy now imagine that you know there was no Bible now some people said that some people just wrote the Bible to try to convince other people to believe in their God now if that's the case if they you know some people just make it up no uh, it's not from the revelation of God uh, it's not from the revelation of God they just um, wrote it you know make it up then they cannot tell for sure that his hands and feet will be pierced because people can be killed in many many ways okay people can be killed in many many ways how did they know that that Jesus will be crucified and his hands and feet will be pierced and the garments will be divided and then his blood will be uh, uh, coming out pouring out from his body because of crucifixion you know there are people die of different ways and then they don't uh, they don't bleed to death but crucifixion people bleed to death okay and then a second prophecy now so we finished the first one now we go to the second prophecy Daniel 9 24 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city now so this is a prophecy of 70 weeks now this is actually not weeks this is actually 70 times 7 years 70 times 7 years and uh, so it's like a week of years that means seven years okay and then for for your people and for the holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sins that's what Jesus came to do he died for us so that he can forgive us and then one day when he comes back when we go to heaven then there is an end to sins no more sins so that Jesus paid for our sins and he can forgive all our sins and then one day we will have no sin anymore when we are in heaven and to make reconciliation for iniquity so because of our sins we are separated from God but because of Jesus crucifixion that we can have reconciliation that we are made peace again that we have peace again with God to bring in everlasting righteousness so we'll have righteousness forever that we can obey the law of God obey God uh, complete, uh, perfectly forever in heaven and that and also is the righteousness of Christ that his perfect righteousness will be given to us will be given to us uh, when we trust in Jesus as our Savior when, then we are called righteous then we are, uh, then it's imputed to us. His righteousness is imputed to us. It's counted as our righteousness. So then Jesus brought in his everlasting righteousness and also one day we can obey God totally. And to seal up visions and prophecy. Here it means fulfill. Fulfill the visions and the prophecy about, about Jesus, about the new covenant. And to anoint the most holy. This is the Christ to anoint the Christ know therefore and understand that from 
that going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Now this is a very, very accurate prophecy about Jesus coming, the time of his coming. That from the command to restore and build Jerusalem. So we'll talk about that in the next slide, that there will be an order to rebuild Jerusalem because Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. And, but then the Persians uh, gave, them, uh, gave the Jews the permission to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And also, uh, with, I'll show you a verse that uh, they could be starting to build on the wall also. So from the time to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, until Christ, there will be 70 week, 7 weeks and seven, 62 weeks. So 7 plus 62 is 69. So this is one week short of the 70 weeks because it here it talks about 70 weeks, but here is only 69. So 62 plus 7 will be 69 weeks. And this is, you multiply that is 483. So this is a prophecy about when Jesus will come. It's 483 years from the time to uh, the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And the street shall be built again. So the street of Jerusalem will be rebuilt and the wall, even in troublesome time. Now this is another detail. Because the Jews never, their, their nation was never restored. So they were in difficult times. So it was in troublesome, troublesome time that they were rebuilding uh, the temple and Jerusalem. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. So after these seven weeks and then the six, seven, uh, 62 weeks, then the Messiah will be cut off. Now this is another a uh, very strange part. Now, if people make up a religion, they want to say that their Messiah, their Savior, will live forever. But here it says that Christ will be killed, that the Messiah will be cut off, will be killed. And it doesn't make sense because in any religion, uh, people are not saved when their leader is killed. But Jesus was killed for us so that we can have eternal life. He paid for our sins so that we are free from death and free from the power of sins. So Jesus Christ has to die for us to pay for the penalty of our sins. And here the, uh, the prophet Daniel prophesied clearly that, that uh, the Christ will be cut off. Okay, and then, but not for himself. He was cut off not, not for himself. But the people of the prince, so it's not for himself, it's for the people. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So here is a prophecy that, that uh, there will be the people of a prince, of a king, will come to destroy, come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now so here is a prophecy that the Messiah, the Christ, will be killed, will be cut off. And then... Uh, the people of a prince, of a king, of an emperor. Now this is the Roman emperor. So the people of the Roman emperor shall come and destroy Jerusalem and the sanctuary. So here is a, here is, are a series of things that will happen for Jesus Christ and for Jerusalem. First, they will plan to re rebuild Jerusalem. There is a plan to rebuild uh, Jerusalem and the temple and then uh, to make an end to sins and to make reconciliation with God for, the, for their sins. That, uh, so Jesus will pay for their sins and then, uh, and then to bring in the everlasting righteousness that Jesus will pay for the, will give them the uh, give us the everlasting righteousness and we also can have righteousness when we obey God. 
and then to anoint the ho most holy one, the Christ, for us. He will be anointed for, for us. But the strange thing is that the holy one will be killed. So this is not logical, but this is God's way. Now, in no other religion that you see that uh, uh, their savior is killed, that doesn't happen to any other religion. But in Christianity, in the Bible, because God is a just God, He's a loving God and He's also a just God. And so when we have sinned that someone has to die for us. And this person has to be perfect. He has to be perfect to pay for our sins. And Jesus was the Son of God and He is also God. And He came to die for us. And so He has to die so that we can have everlasting righteousness. And He's also perfect. And the time of His coming is, is uh, seven weeks and 62 weeks. So that is 69 weeks. Multiplied by seven. 69 multiplied by seven is 483. So from the time, to, from the order to restore and build Jerusalem to the time of the anointing of Jesus Christ will be 483 years. This is what the prophecy says. And then after Jesus was crucified, then there will be soldiers, there will be people of an emperor who will come and destroy the city, uh, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary. The holy place will be destroyed. And then the end of it shall be with a flood. So it will be like a flood pouring down on the city and the sanctuary. War will continue until the end and desolation have been decreed. So there will be war, and in the Middle East, we notice that there are wars all the time. And now they have wars in a different way. They have terrorist action, which is another way of wars. Terrorist action uh, is something you know that you, pe people don't declare a war. They just put a bomb somewhere. They just assassinate some people. So this is the terrorist action. And this is happening uh, every year. You know, if you check up online on terrorist action, you find that there are many, many cases of terrorist action every year. So it happens all the time in the Middle East and others, some other country too. So the desolation, the destruction have been decreed. So there will be destruction. And the Jews suffer greatly. They were deported. Uh, taken to different, uh, they were driven away from, from Jerusalem and from Judah, from Israel, and then they, uh, they were taken to different, they uh, went to different countries, and then they suffer for a long time. So this is a prophecy uh, that was fulfilled, that a series of things were fulfilled to show that this is from God. Okay? So now we explain this more fully. From the command to restore and build Jerusalem to the anointing of the Messiah so that from the time to the command to restore and build Jerusalem to the time of the anointing of the Messiah, the Christ. Now in the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew word for the Christ is Messiah and in the New Testament is Christ. It's the same word. Messiah means the Christ, the anointed one. And in the Old Testament, there were three kinds of uh, people who are anointed. The king, the priests, and the prophets are anointed. They have to, you know, God will send someone to anoint the king. Usually the priest or the prophet will anoint the king. And then uh, also uh, the, the priest will anoint the next priest. And then uh, the uh, the prophet will be anointed by God and the prophet will be anointed by another prophet uh, or sometimes God just chose them to be a prophet and then so these uh, three people king uh, the priests and the prophets are anointed of God and Christ has all three position he's the king of kings he's the king of everything and he is a, a priest. 
He brought people to God and He brought God to people. And He also is the perfect sacrifice. And He also is the prophet to preach the Word of God, to tell us the truth. Jesus' message is different from all the prophets because He declared Himself. He said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. So He declares Himself that you come to me and then you'll have uh, a stream of living water flowing out from you. So this is declaring His uh, His. Uh, authority and his his God only God can give us life and everlasting life he's he said he you know I'm the life the truth and the way so he's he has uh, he's the way to God and he is life he he can give us life okay so Christ was now and to rev uh, here uh, let me explain here so there will be seven weeks from the command to restore and re to build Jerusalem to the anointing of Messiah. There will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. And that is seven times seven plus 62 times seven. And you add 62 and seven, it will be 69 times nine. So it's just one week short of 70 weeks. So se uh, 70 weeks will be 490. Seven times seven is 49. So 490 years, and then seven years short of it will be 483. So this is believed to be the 483 years. Ezra 9.9, talk about the command to rebuild Jerusalem. But he extended mercy to us in the sight of the king of Persia, to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild, to build, to rebuild its ruins and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. So here in Ezra 9 9, that here it talks about God has extended his mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to revive them, to give them new life, and to repair the house of God. So the first task is to rebuild the temple and then to, and to rebuild. Is ruins and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Now here it talks about give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. Now the um, the rebuilding of Jerusalem was mainly uh, under Jeremiah. But here, uh, when Ezra was sent back, uh, maybe they start to build some walls in Jerusalem. Maybe they start to build. That's why Ezra here said that. Give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. So this is the starting to rebuild Jerusalem. Uh, now perhaps the temple is is called a wall of Jerusalem because it's you know here it in this verse because in a way it protects the Israelites because that's the place where uh, they are protected. So whatever it is, but it says right here that to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. So this is the order to rebuild Jerusalem. And this happens in 457 BC. Okay, And Christ was anointed by the Holy Spirit when he was baptized by John the Baptist in the river Jordan. Then, then the Holy Spirit came down upon him at the age of 30. Of 30. In Matthew 3.16, he was anointed when he was 30 years old by John, uh, John, uh, John the Baptist in the river Jordan. And then the Holy Spirit came upon him and then the voice of the Father and said, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And then the year of the Lord is devised by a monk called Dion Dionysius Exquis. But he made a mistake. Now he's supposed to make Christ was born in the first year AD, but he made a mistake and Christ should be born between about 3 to 5 BC. That was a mistake of him. He miscounted some years. So he counted wrong. He was not really a historian, but he tried to do it. Uh, he was a monk because he, you know, he, he believed in Jesus and he wanted to make the year of the Lord a universal calendar for the whole world. At that time, it was for the Roman Empire. And he wanted to make this 
uh, something that the people will remember the time of Jesus Christ. And uh, now actually there were some other people who were trying to do this, but he was the one who really uh, make this uh, popular and he, he counted the time, but he made a mistake. So Christ should be born about between 3 to 5 BC and then we count it as 4, 4 BC. So Christ's anointing is about 26 AD. So it's so he was Christ was born about 4 BC and so when he was 30 years old should be 30 AD and now you count minus four years will be 26 AD okay so Christ was born in the first year and then he he uh, started his ministry at uh, 30 so it should be 30 AD but because of the mistake he was anointed in 26 AD instead of 30 AD so 457 years before Christ was the order to rebuild the temple and Jerusalem 457 plus the 26 years 26 years that uh, after Christ was born that uh, not after Christ was born but after AD that uh, Christ was anointed then you add it up together is 483 that is 69 times 7 so we we count that that's really miraculous that the Bible prophesied the exact year when Christ will be uh, anointed. Counting from the time, from the command to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of Jesus' anointing. So from the time of 457 BC to Christ's anointing at 26 AD, you add 457 to 26 it, uh, then it becomes 483. So this is really wonderful, a very detailed prophecy. So from the command to restore and build Jerusalem to the anointing of Messiah, there were exactly 69 times 7, that is 483 years, okay? So uh, this is a little complicated, but I hope you understand that. So uh, let me explain this briefly again. So it's from Daniel 9.24 uh, to 26 that talks about the 70 years, but here only talk about 69 times 7. So it's only talk about the 69, year, 69 weeks. So it's 483 years. And then so from the time uh, from the command to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, there will be, so until he became the Messiah, the anointed one, the anointing of him. The Messiah is, means the anointed one. Until the anointing of Christ, uh, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So that is 60, 69 times seven. And then after that, Jerusalem will be destroyed by uh, the people of a prince, of, a, uh, of uh, the Roman emperor will come to destroy the city and the sanctuary and then there will be war and desolation to the end until the end okay Daniel 9 26 and after 62 weeks he will be cut off and then they will destroy the city and the sanctuary and this was fulfilled in 70 AD then the Messiah shall be cut off and the people the Romans of the Prince Roman Emperor came to destroy Jerusalem and the sanctuary and this was fulfilled in 70 AD when the Romans came because the Jews rebelled and then the Romans came and killed the Jews and destroyed the temple and also summoned sapphire uh, according to the record the Roman soldiers did not want to burn the temple at first but then someone set fire and then the temple was in flame and then the soldiers also stole from the temple so this is what happened in 70 AD one generation now Jesus was crucified uh, at his age of 33 so uh, because of the mistake so it should be it could be 29 AD about 30 AD 
from 3080 to 7080 is 40 years. So it's one generation. So within that generation, Jerusalem was destroyed and the, uh, the sanctuary, the temple was destroyed. So all this were fulfilled. Uh, the prophecy of Daniel 9, 24 to 27. So it's very accurate prophecy. And then Daniel 90, uh, 926 that there will be war will continue until the end and desolation have been decreed. So war will continue until the end and desolation was decreed. decreed. The Israelites have gone through wars, the Holocaust, uh, which was uh, uh, done by Hitler in the Second World War. He killed uh, around 6 million Jews. So this is a punishment because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. Then, uh, you know, the, it was a judgment upon the Jews uh, that, and also Satan attacked the Jews because uh, the Jews uh, lost the favor of God because they did not believe in Jesus. So they did not have salvation. But now many Jews are, you know, are called back to Jesus. Uh, uh, you can look up on the internet one for Israel in, uh, in YouTube. One for Israel has many testimonies of many Jews who became Christians, who believe in Jesus. And many of them at the beginning, they were not Christians. And then God uh, used miracle, miraculous ways. And many of them saw the vision of Jesus or experienced Jesus, Jesus when they cry out, who are you, God? Who are you, God? And then Jesus show up or they experience the power of God and they, and they knew that it was from Jesus. And there are many testimonies like that. So the Jews are turning to Jesus in this generation, but yet the majority of the Jews don't believe in Jesus. So there will be wars in the Middle East. And one, you know, other than the regular war, there are a lot of terrorist wars. Now here you can see children soldiers the terrorists even trained us children to fight wars and the children are taught that if you kill you know if you fight and then you will kill and then you can go to heaven so they were taught this teaching so even children want to kill other people and they are, are not afraid they're not afraid to die because they think that when they die they go to heaven and then people killed by terrorism worldwide from 1970 to 20, 20, uh, 2016 that you can see the number is rising continually. It's rising continually. There are more and more people killed and more and more terrorist action every year. So this is the fulfillment of this prophecy of Daniel 9 and also um, a fulfillment of the war after that and also it's a fulfillment of the end time we are coming close to the end time so now these two prophecies we just talked about uh, first is about Jesus crucifixion that uh, David did not know about crucifixion but he prophesied that Christ because he used I because Christ was his descendant so he used I like he experienced what Jesus Christ ex experienced. And this is something uh, David never experienced, that he was pierced to the hand and his clothing were divided and then he, his, he, he bled to death. And then Daniel 9, 24 to 27 here, 26 here, talks about that uh, the 70 the 69 weeks from the order to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of the anointing of the Christ will be 69 times 7. That will be 483 years. So we see that the Bible is very accurate to prophesy the time of Jesus coming that he will come 483 years, 69 times 7 years from the time of the order to rebuild Jerusalem. And then Jesus was crucified he was put to death he was cut off and then the city Jerusalem will be destroyed so this is a message to people that Jesus is the only possible Christ because Daniel 9 already talked about the deadline of the coming of Christ 
Because here it says that after the Christ came, after he comes and then he is killed, then Jerusalem will be destroyed. And this and Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. So Christ have must have come before 70 AD. So this is a message to the Jews that Christ has already come. Don't wait for another Christ. Christ will come from heaven in the future, but it will be too late to believe in him when he come down from heaven. But before the destruction of Jerusalem, because Daniel uh, prophesied. Now, if the Jews will pay attention to this prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, the Jews believe in the Old Testament. So they know that this is prophesying the Messiah, the Messiah will come. And then it's from the order to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of the coming of Christ will be 69 times 7 and it's already fulfilled. And then Christ will be killed. He will be anointed and then killed and then Jerusalem will be destroyed. And they all know that from the time of Daniel that the temple was rebuilt and then destroyed. So this only fulfillment is in the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. So this set a deadline for the coming of Christ. Christ will have come before 70 AD. And Jesus Christ was the only one that fulfilled that uh, requirement. He has lived a perfect life. Now many Jews attacked him because he said that he healed people on the day of Sabbath. But Jesus said, I'm the Lord of Sabbath. That he set the people free on the Sabbath day because he is God. That he can give peace to people. This is a a day of peace and rest for the people. So these people are healed on the Sabbath day. And then Jesus showed that he is the Son of God by his miracles, by raising people from the dead, and also by his declaration, by his words. And also today, when we pray in Jesus' name, we can cast out demons and then we can uh, pray for the healing of people and people to experience the Holy Spirit, to experience the love of God, the transformation from God, and people can experience all this. So, so it shows that Jesus is the only one that has fulfilled this prophecy to be the Christ. And so I hope the Jews will believe that Jesus is the Christ and uh, will not reject Him. Because when the Jews believe in Jesus, then the heart of God is fulfilled. God wants to see the Jews and the people of all different nations believe in Jesus. So if any Jew, any Israelites hear this message, please understand that this is fulfilled when uh, Jesus came before the destruction of Jerusalem. The Christ must have come before uh, the destruction of Jerusalem uh, in 70 AD. So this detailed prophecy, this detailed prophecy about in Daniel 9, uh, about the time of Jesus coming, 483 years, and then he will be killed, and then there will be war, and Jerusalem and the temple will be destroyed, and then there will be war after that. It's all fulfilled. So all this fulfillment let us know that God is real. The Bible is really from God. So that we know for sure that when we believe in Jesus, we believe the Bible, it's all from God. So I hope everyone who hears this message, message will say that, yes, I want to follow God totally because he is, he is God. He is God. And the Bible is God's Word. So when we believe in the Bible, we know that we, know that we are following the truth. Okay, and then this is another prophecy. This is um, okay. This is Malachi. Uh, I uh, I did not put down the verse here. It should be Malachi three one. Okay, Malachi three one. Behold, I send my messenger, John, uh, and this is John the Baptist, and he will prepare the way before me. 
and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Okay, so this prophecy is Uh, is very interesting because it's God Himself who prophesied. Uh, you look, you, you read the context. Now this is Malachi three one. You read the context, you find that it is the Lord who is speaking, the Lord uh, Yahweh who is speaking. He said, "I will send my messenger, bef and he will prepare the way before me. He will prepare the way before me." So he'll prepare the way for God. And now this, uh, this uh, message, this uh, prophecy is fulfilled by John the Baptist when he came and he was preparing the way of Jesus. And I send my messenger, and this, the one who is preparing for, for Jesus was John the Baptist. So I will send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. Now, here, God said, it's before me. So it's saying, Jesus is God. So this is one passage that, talks, that says that Jesus is God, that John the Baptist is preparing the way of God. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And so he'll come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Uh, so he is the messenger of the covenant. He will... Uh, bring you a new covenant that you would delight in this covenant that the messenger of the covenant would be Christ he is uh, suddenly the messenger of the covenant will come and he will come to the temple okay so here God said he will send his messenger before him and, and then the Lord the messenger of the covenant will come to his temple the Lord is God and he's the messenger of the new covenant. So it's before me, it's God speaking. So it's the Lord, it's God himself speaking. Uh, the messenger will prepare my way and John the Baptist will prepare his way. And God's messenger who prepares the way before God is John the Baptist. Okay, the Lord will suddenly come to his temple. The temple was rebuilt in 457 B.C. Okay, that was when Ezra returned, and then uh, and then the temple was rebuilt. It would have been very old, you know, four hundred and fifty-seven years plus the time when Jesus, after Je Jesus grew up, so it will be about uh, uh, almost four hundred and eighty some years. It would have been very old, but God moved the heart of Herod the Great to rebuild the temple. Now Herod the Great is, is a terrible man, is a very uh, uh, cruel man. He killed his, three of his sons and his wife and his mother-in-law. And he killed the babies in Jerusalem, that, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, in Bethlehem. When Jesus was born, the wise men from the east came and asked, uh, where will your king be born? And then uh, Herod the Great asked the priests uh, and the scribes, and then they said it's from uh, Bethlehem, because that it has been prophesied in Bethlehem that there will be one who will be born, and his source is from eternity. And this is Christ. So, uh, the wise men went to Bethlehem and looked for Jesus. And then, but then uh, King Herod told, told them to come back and tell him so that he can go and worship. But actually he wanted to kill the Christ. But Joseph got the message from God. Immediately escaped from Bethlehem and go to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill the baby. So Joseph took Mary and Jesus to uh, Egypt and then uh, Herod was very angry 
and he killed all the baby boys under two years old. He killed all the baby boys in the area of Bethlehem. And this was fulfilled in another prophecy. So this is Herod the Great. He is a very cruel man. And he killed the babies. He killed his three sons and his wife and his mother-in-law. And this man got moved his heart to build, rebuild the temple. Now this is very, very interesting. Now Herod the Great is a person who, want, who, who likes to build buildings. He has built many buildings. I went to Israel and there was a place of the tomb of Abraham. Uh, now I, I don't remember. I know it's Abraham there and Sarah. And then uh, the other ones there, I, I, I don't remember exactly. But the place of Abraham's burial place, it should be also Isaac and, and Jacob uh, because they were buried in the same place. And so I went to the place and there was a big, big building. And this building was also built by Herod the Great. Herod the Great wanted to build buildings to glorify himself. And one of the projects he built was the temple. And he did not realize that he rebuilt the temple to prepare, to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came and fulfilled the prophecy. And the temple was rebuilt. If the temple has not been rebuilt, it would be an old, old temple, very old temple and torn down temple. But God moved the heart of King Herod. That shows that God has the ability to move even the most wicked man to do things. Okay, now I, I want to un, uh, explain something theological. When God wants to move people to do regular things, He can move anyone to do anything. But when God wants, wants to move someone to believe in Jesus, it's only through the Holy Spirit. And then when this person uh, is moved by the Holy Spirit and he believes in Jesus, then the work of God is done. In the moving of you know, when God moves people to do things, do regular things, He can move anyone to do it. They don't have to accept in Jesus. But when He moves someone to believe in Jesus and follow Jesus, to be sent by Jesus to, to serve God, this person has to be touched by the Holy Spirit that He hear the message of the Word of God, the message of salvation, and then He is touched by the Holy Spirit to believe in Jesus and repent. So the person has to repent and trust in Jesus and then the work of God is completed. So God cannot force someone to believe. The person must also respond to the Holy Spirit. Now it's God's work. God ch changed people's heart, but people can reject God. So about salvation, uh, it's different from God's work in other things. In other things in history, God can make anything happen. But in people's heart, now God wants all the Christians to love God, but many Christians don't love God. The Holy Spirit moves Christians, move the Christians to love God, but many Christians don't respond. The Holy Spirit moves in them to respond to God, but they don't. And I hope we all will respond to God. So God wants to move in our heart to repent, and, and Christians can reject that. And people you know, who are not Christian yet, and the Holy Spirit comes, someone tell them about Jesus, and to move them to believe in Jesus, this person had, can reject. But it's the Holy Spirit that changes people. But people can reject the Holy Spirit. So we understand that in the work of God, in salvation, uh, the person can reject the work of God. And also in obedience to God, people can reject. Many people reject God's work uh, when God moves them to, to uh, serve God and to preach the gospel and to be sent by God. And I, I know that God is real. I study you know, all the prophecy early, early in my uh, faith in Jesus because I, I was a science student. I'm a person who wants to study, you know, have proofs. And I came across a book that God let me see this book in a, in a bookstore, in a Christian bookstore. It's Hades' 
uh, uh, Bible dictionary, uh, not dictionary, Bible handbook. And, in, and I found that in the middle, there is a section about all the prophecies about Christ in the Old Testament. And I saw that, I immediately bought the book, and I went home and studied all the prophecies. I'm a person who studied myself, and no one in my church told me to do that. <coughs> no one in my church told me to do that. <coughs> Since I became a Christian, I read Christian's books, I read the Bible, and I studied these prophecies, and I did not tell anyone in the church. There was no one in the church that followed up on me. I just did all the study myself. Uh, and, and so I found that there are many prophecies fulfilled. And so I, I became very you know, sure, I was very sure that God is real. And I, I was motivated to serve God. And especially after I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, when I experienced this power of love flowing from me, flowing into me, when Carlos Anacondia, Carlos Anacondia from Argentina in South America came to Hong Kong, and he laid hand on me and experienced this great love coming in the form of great power, and I felt a great love coming into me. I, and I said, wow, this is so wonderful that I can experience this love. And I really want to respond totally. And I, and I dedicate my life to God. I want to love God totally. I want to serve God. I want to help more people. Uh, I want to be used by God to the maximum. I don't want to follow any sin. So I hope every one of you will not want to follow any sin. Do not want to, be, to commit any sin because sin will separate us from God. You know, even though when you still believe in Jesus, our sins will you know, uh, put a wall between us and God. When you repent, we can restore to God, but the relationship would not be strong. The relationship would be like this, like the rubber band, not very strong. But for some people, it's very strong. It's like steel that they don't want to depart from God. So I hope your relationship with God is not like a rubber band. For many people, the relationship is very weak because they're not committed to God. So I hope that you're committed to God and really obey Him and love Him and serve Him. And whenever we do anything for God, even when we give a cup of water to a little one, in Jesus' name, God is happy with us and He'll remember and reward us. So everything we do for God, God is very happy. So I hope every one of us are, are willing to serve God and love God and really turn away from sins and obey Him every, in every way. And then God is very happy. So I hope that these prophecies will help us to be sure of God, that sure that God is real, and also obeying God is the best thing that we want to obey Him totally. Okay, and then, um, so here, let me finish here. So God moved the heart of Herod the Great to rebuild the temple. Herod the Great kill the baby boys in and around Bethlehem. He killed three of his sons, his wife and his mother-in-law. He started to rebuild and enlarge the temple at 19 to 20 BC, about that time, just ready to prepare for Jesus suddenly coming to the temple. Now this is very interesting, that Herod the Great started to build the temple about 19 to 20 BC, and then in Jesus' time, it was still being uh, rebuilt in a certain way. So it's very interesting. Uh, that it just came, Herod the Great came at the right time to rebuild Jerusalem so that when Christ came, it was a newly rebuilt temple. Isn't that interesting? So I hope that we all say, Wow, God is wonderful. God is wonderful that, that Jesus came at the right time. Uh, 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 Herod the Great came at the right time to rebuild the temple for him. Okay, now this is one large stone in the temple. It weighs about 600 tons. Now it's hard to imagine in the old days, they did not have machines. How did they move this large stone? How did they move?